All right, we'll be getting started in a few minutes. We need to uh, let more people into the forum before we, uh, we begin. Yeah, we had 92 people register right now we've got about 50 in uh, excuse me about 25 in so far I guess I should have had some music running. So where are we at on our count? 27. six after right now, do we want to get started? The uh, forum is being recorded. So um, if someone does come in late, they'll be able to, uh, to access the recording. And um, you know, you know, committee, thumbs up, get started. Thumbs up. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Vernon Davis uh, with the class of 86. I'm the chair of the nominations and elections committee. Um, Today's candidates forum is for the um, Board of Trustees position, which has a term, a four year term 2022 through 2026. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to uh, introduce you to the members of the nominations and elections committee. Um, again, uh, Marion Terrain, uh, class of 1990. We have Andrew Sproul class of 88, Gloria Hartwell, class of 79, and Jay Vernon Peterson, uh, class of 73. As I said, uh, my name is Vernon Davis. Again, I'm with the class of 86, and I'm the, uh, the chair of the committee. Um, before we get started, um, I did want to give one of our candidates an opportunity to address the, um, the audience um, to make a special announcement. Um, you know, before we, before we get started, um, Dr. Lane M. Allen, I'd like to give you the floor uh, so that you can address the, uh, the group 
and um, I'll pull my share down and then bring the presentation back up when we get started again. You're, you're on mute. If you can unmute yourself. Yeah, just hit the unmute button. Okay, hold on. Are you able to unmute yourself? No? Okay, there we, there we go. go. There Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vernon Davis and nominating committee. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk to the group. Um, I am, um, was excited to be nominated for the trustee position, but I really need to decline that and withdraw my nomination. So I want to announce that to all of you today. Um, Lincoln University is um, a, a dear, is a love for me. Um, it really changed the trajectory of my life and gave me opportunities that I would not have had. Um, but the new year, 2022, has just really brought some changes to my life personally. Um, I changed jobs last year, which is great. Um, but, but at the beginning of the year, my former mother-in-law, who's like an other mother to me, passed away. And so processing that um, as an individual. And then last week, I found out that my 16-month-old niece is severely autistic. My little sister, who's 22 years younger than me, so she's almost like a daughter to me, um, really needs to support in walking through that process. And so I really don't want to take on something that I know I'll have to pull back on. And so I wanted to get on there to say that to you, because Lincoln, um, you, all of you are family to me. And um, I want to see our university thrive and grow, and I believe you should have your best in that, and I know that right now I can't be my best in that process, um, but I am still here active in AALU. Um, Ray Jeter, I'm still in Pittsburgh, and so I just wanted to, to get on and, and share that with you before we move into the forum. Vernon, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, you know, one, I just wanted to, uh, uh, Dr. Allen, thank you for taking the opportunity to um, uh, to share with you your your credentials, share with us your credentials, and also, um, you know, wish you the best in 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 your family and, and work endeavors. And you know, one day soon, we hope that we will have you as a candidate for uh, for alumni trustee because we believe that you know you are a um, uh, a, a great representative of what an alumni trustee should be. Uh, so with that being said, you know, we will have one candidate, um, you know, Lisa M.B. Johnson, Lisa Bacon. Uh, for those of you who might know Lisa, now we want to, um, I want to start back up my, uh, my sharing process yet in, in Zoom. And, um, you know, we want to move forward with our presentation of our candidate. And um, we'll have an opportunity to question Lisa for the board of trustee position, uh, but there is still an election on May 14th, 2020. And um, you know, again, this this uh, is a forum; it's not a debate. Um, although there's still only one candidate that will be running, we're going to give that candidate an opportunity to address you all uh, with a with an introduction. And uh, we would ask that you not interrupt the candidate. Uh, we've selected a number of questions for our candidate. And um, you know, we'll also have an opportunity in the chat if you feel as though there's a question that has not been answered you know, and you'd like to post that into the chat, we'll review that. And at the end of the presentation, uh, present that question to our candidate. Um, you know, so you know, that's the, the framework and the rules. Um, you know, if you have multiple candidates, I'll go through the violations. So I'm not going to really go through that right now. Um, but we want to give Lisa an opportunity to address the uh, the body. And, um, you know, the things that she's going to be addressing really are 
what are her experiences, uh, you know, in terms of being qualified for the Board of Trustees? Uh, what goals uh, does she wish to, uh, to reach? And um, how will she help raise money, which is paramount to survival of, of this HBCU and Lincoln University? And how will she help to uh, keep the alumni informed because she is uh, running for the position of alumni elected trustee? And, you know, just touch on what Lincoln means to you. So we're gonna, you know, uh, bring Lisa Bacon on to address our, our group and I'll stop sharing. and we'll highlight Lisa and give her an opportunity to, uh, to address the, the body. Good afternoon, everyone. So we all, I only have three minutes, so I am going to go through what I, uh, prepared uh, to say in my three minutes, answering those questions that Vernon just um, mentioned. So I have over 35 years of experience in professional and volunteer environments where I have developed, managed, and implemented programs. I am experienced in strategic planning, operational and financial management, program and policy development, fundraising, donor management, publications development, special events management, and contract management. I have worked in elementary, secondary, and higher education, as well as social service environments. I have my BS degree in public affairs from Lincoln University and my master's degree in public administration from the University of Delaware. I worked at Lincoln from 1988 to 1998 as the assistant director and director of student activities and as the first female director of alumni relations. I also served as the national president of the alumni association and, in, and am currently a lifetime member and I serve actively with the Philadelphia chapter. I have also served and currently serve on several community boards. I am most proud of my participation as a founding board member of the Wilmington Police Athletic League and the Maurice J. Moyer Academy Charter School, where we managed and, uh, capital campaigns and built buildings and programs from the ground. I am employed by the state of Delaware and serve as the administrator for emergency and transitional housing and the family visitation programs. As a board member, my goal will be not to come in with any preconceived notions but to be a team player, figure out where the biggest need is for board participation and do what I can to make a significant impact. To help raise money, I would encourage more alumni to give, work with the development office on alumni giving campaigns such as phonathons and serve on the appropriate board committee for this effort. To keep alumni informed, I think that alumni trustees could develop a joint summary of each board meeting and distribute it to all alumni chapters and then have the alumni association post the report on their website. What Lincoln means to me, simply put, I just love my HBCU. <laughs> um, Lincoln was the launch point in my life, um, the place where I was able to develop character, pride and lifelong friendships. I learned a lot about myself and that the world was much bigger than North Philadelphia. I remember moving into Hansberry Hall, walking across the beautiful campus green. I remember awesome professors like Dr. and Mrs. Farrell, Dr. Savage, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Thomas, mentors like Tick Coleman and J. Paul Steffens, parties at the bottom of the sub, plays and variety shows at the Ware Center, basketball games, homecomings, new, new Musi and participating on the Student Activities Program Board. Um, I could go on and on and on, but I have timed myself and I think that this is all I have in my three minutes, <laughs> all the time I have. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Lisa. Um, you know, we're gonna bring you back on in a, uh, in, in a second. You know, in, in terms of uh, questions, the way this forum is, is uh, organized, we're gonna have uh, a specific question. Actually, right now, all the questions are specifically for you. Um, you know, so one of the questions that we wanted you to go a little bit deeper into is how you would translate your work and life ex experiences to areas where you can successfully 
contribute to the Board of Trustees. So if you're looking at your work and life, work and life experiences, how can you uh, translate those into successful contributions to the board? And is she Unmute on mute? Unmute yourself, yeah. All right, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things is that I know that the board is responsible for st strategic planning um, and the financial management of the university, also policy development. Um, and I have extensive experience in that. Um, in most of the positions that I've served in, I've had to do that. Um, fundraising, we mentioned fundraising. I have experience in that. I helped um, build the Wilmington Police Athletic League and the Morris J. Moyer Academy School from the ground up. We had to do two major capital campaigns. Both of those were multi-million dollar projects. Um, of course, there was a team. I served as secretary of the board for both of those boards during that time. I, um, the, both of them had advisory boards before they became a full board to move towards um, the capital campaigns and doing what needed to done to bring these projects, doing what needed to be done to bring these projects to fruition. And I was involved from the uh, very beginning on both of those programs as an advisory board member and then as an board member. Um, during my time at Lincoln University, um, I learned a lot working in the um, alumni office about the development portion of the university and what it means um, for fundraising. And I think it's important for us to kind of, I know a lot of alumni probably understand, but then we have a lot that don't understand about Lincoln University's fundraising efforts and the alumni giving piece. And it's important to make alumni, more alumni understand that even we want a lot of money, but even if you can only give $5 a year, we want you to give $5 a year because when we go out to get the big bucks, um, we can, we would like to say that we have 100% of our alumni giving and the big, the companies that have the big bucks, they don't care that Lisa only gave $5. What they care about is that the university, the stakeholders of the university has 100% um, participation um, and that, you know, they care enough to make a contribution no matter what it is. Um, I think you said, translate my experience. Okay, I think I've done that. <laughs> Yeah, you have. You All have. Right. <laughs> uh, stay on for a second. Um, you know, in terms of uh, really transitioning to our responsibility or a board member's responsibility, and you know, I think that you were clear in that you think that folks should give money. But what is what responsibility do you believe that an alumni trustee should have to contribute financially to the university, and also, uh, you know, talk about what ways you support at Lincoln and what your giving record is. Oh, I don't remember what my giving record is, but I know I do give, I support the university. Um, I have almost every year supported the university with gifts during the different campaigns when they send um, funds out. I know the chapter has different goals that they try to reach and I do support um, those goals financially um, as much as I can. With regards to, what was the other part of that question? You said con contribute. Oh, what do you think the, the alumni trustees responsibilities are yes. with re regards to just the financial support? Yes. Okay, I mean, well, I have- give, I'm talking about give and get. I mean, you know, so, you know, if you're talking, you know, what, what is the alumni trustees responsibility in your opinion? Uh, to, to the university or to the alumni? To the university. Okay. So I think that the alum, alumni trustees responsibility to the university is to make sure that we stand out, make sure that the university um, is in a position where some of those large um, groups and companies, just like the, I can't remember the lady's name who just gave us those the few million dollars, a bunch of million dollars, but if we could get, Kenzie Scott, if we can get our name out more and so that we can get recognized more like that. And um, then we had the young man in, I think it was New Jersey, who gave us, who gave scholarships to a lot of our students, paid their bills off, I believe it was. 
Um, I think we just need to, because Lincoln used to be considered what the, the, the Harvard or the Princeton of the, you know what I mean? And I just think that we're doing a lot of great things, um, but I don't know, I, and I know that things are getting noticed, but I think as a board member, we could try to do a little bit more to just get us out there and toot our horns a little bit more so that we could stand out there because we're already standing out there. It's just not as public. The Hamptons and the, the Spelmans and the, the Howard University, we're just as good as all those institutions. And I think it's just about marketing and um, where and how, and I really don't know where and how those, where those, you know, how we can do that. But I would be very supportive of that, um, us getting out on that circuit to get Lincoln more notoriety um, out there. We're smaller, so of course, and, we, and our endowment is growing, but it's smaller than the Hamptons and the Spellmans and the Howard Universities. And that's why I think sometimes we get overlooked from the, with the big donors or the big individual. I'm talking about people who have the money to donate that kind of money to Lincoln and not just to Hampton Howard and the ones that I named and even some, some other school um, HBCUs. So I think that would be one of our responsibilities is to just get us out there. Um, I think that alumni trustees should definitely keep the alumni informed um, with what's happening on the board. Everyone shouldn't have to attend the board meetings. We have representatives on the board. So more communications should be coming out from our alumni trustees, just to let alumni, no matter what's going on, good, the bad and ugly, all the information is public. And um, I think that through the avenues that we have, our alumni chapters, if we submit reports, um, not really reports, but kind of summaries of what's happening, uh, because our, we, are, we have our, our first allegiance is to Lincoln University. And as alumni, we do need to keep the alumni informed. Yeah, thank you for, um, you know, for your answer. I think that you know, nice thing is that it's leading into the next question, which is really describing, you, know, you talked about a fundraising effort that you had in your community. Um, you know, you know, how would that type of success, uh, how would you bring that to Lincoln University and the Board of Trustees? So I think that um, there would be a partnership, but I mean, and, and I'm a grounds on type of person. So what I, I don't know if the university, I haven't received any calls in the past few years from Lincoln students. Um, but I know when I was alumni director, we used to, we had started doing um, phonathons. I mean, I get calls from the University of Delaware students every year asking me to donate. And if, and I really don't cause I send my money to Lincoln, <laughs> but, um, um, but the, I think a part of it is pulling our, and it, it'll also help the alumni association down the road when you get more, more students involved with that giving piece, um, the fund rate, the, if we have phonathons and you have student, you can get your volunteer um, group of students, faculty and staff, and every, all, from all the stakeholders, but get students involved to call alumni to try to encourage them to give. And we know who's given and who hasn't. And we have lists of people who gave last year, but not the year before, and people who are sometimes givers and one in the, you know, but when people tend, I know when I, when I hear from University of Delaware, it touches my heart, but I always think in the back of my mind, okay, maybe I'll send them $20 this year, but Lincoln gets the rest, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's just what I decide to do um, with my money, because I think that Lincoln needs it more than the University of Delaware. <laughs> Um, they're a research institution, so they get a lot of money. And um, so that's, that's where I think that, that's how I could help with um, on that piece. And then if we, I mean, I, I hadn't considered thought about it because it is major project. And I know that the board is already working on all of the um, renovations and things on campus. I would like to be participate in that because I think what we're doing is fantastic. Um, getting uh, renovating all of our old buildings instead of trying to constantly um, add new buildings. We have a lot of our, our, our campus is a historical campus. I mean, we were a part of the 
underground railroad system. And we need to make sure that our buildings on campus and I think Dr. Allen is doing a fantastic job. So once I get on the board, I'll be on the ends of that and I'll know exactly all the ins and outs of how they're doing that and see how I can fit in. And I would be happy to do whatever needed to be done to make sure and ensure that um, we get all of those done. Not saying that we don't, we shouldn't consider um, building new buildings and stuff like that, but I think it is important to protect our history and the legacy of the university by uh, renovating and um, um, refurbishing our buildings. I love the idea. I think she came to the Philly chapter. Well, I know she came to the Philly chapter, but she mentioned that the bell for the bell tower um, that they, that the, I the guess the architects or whoever goes in the building, they found the bell and they're trying to figure out a way to use that bell. And I think that that's important is things like that. Yeah, so I would Crescent, like to help Crescent Hall. Yeah, Crescent. Yeah, yeah. Crescent Hall. And I, I actually was a resident of Crescent Hall on that very, very top floor, right? Probably right underneath where the bell sat all those years. <laughs> so. Yeah, I didn't know there was a bell there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, if we look at you know, if if we look at um, you know, we talk about the president of the university and and roles, you know, in terms of the roles of the board, you know, how do you view the role of the board versus the role of the president of the university? I mean, there's been some talk, you know, about those roles in recent years, and and um, you know, we just like to get your opinion in terms of your view on the role of the board versus the role of the president of the university. Well, I think the main role of the board is to support the person that you hire to serve as the president <laughs> in whatever in whatever role, whatever needs to happen. Um, you just support the president in the vision that they have because you, you've hired a professional to run the day-to-day -day and operate the university and come up with a vision and to move the university forward. And it would be the board's job to support that and do what was necessary to um, move that vision forward. Um, I think the president's role is just what she's doing, what's being done. Um, look around, see what, what we can do to improve and bring it to the board, say, this is the plan, this is what we would like to do and the board to support that and say, okay, we'll find a way to get these things done. And it's the board's job to find a way to make it happen. <laughs> um, in 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 conjunction with the president um with the ideas because i'm i'm a firm believer that two brains are better than one and 21 brains are definitely better than 20 and 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 you know so everybody working together the board and the president to do what needs to be done makes sense makes sense um you know I, you know we talked a lot about you know what you know, you can do for the board. Uh, this next question is really, uh, we want to see what the board can do for you. You know, identify any personal or professional aspirations that you believe will further the mission of the Board of Trustees and Lincoln University. I'm not sure I understand that question, Vernon. <laughs> if, if, you, if you're thinking in terms of, you know, what can the board do for you? Hmm. What can the board do for me? Yeah, because I mean, I'll give you an example. Well, mm -hmm. when, I served, when I served on the board, um, you know, I, I really wanted to get a better understanding of, you know, how the organization is run financially and fiscally, you know, so that was something that I think the board did for me in terms of okay. teaching how that happened. So, you know, if there are any personal professional aspirations that you'd like to enhance by being on the board, well, um, I just think similarly to that, I would want to know what the state of Pennsylvania's relationship is with Lincoln University. Um, I could learn that better from being on the board. Um, I think, um, I guess just information and knowledge about how things are run internally. Um, what the how well I would like to know the relationship between the state I know that we're state related but I think it would be nice to know um 
what that real relationship is between Lincoln and the state of Pennsylvania. Um, for me, it's just learning more, just learning more on a different level, um, okay. on the policy level, on the, um, because once I learn what's happening with Lincoln University in the state, I also learned during that process what's happening with all the universities, um, all the state related universities within the state. <laughs> I'll be learning a lot and hopefully understand if things are being fair. I know a while ago we had talked about funding and different things is who's, who are Lincoln University's connections in Harrisburg and um, who are, you know, who are the players and what, what it really takes for us to be able to do what we can do at Lincoln through that, through whatever we need from the state. How do we get what we need from the state? Um, are we getting enough? How, how, do we, how do we compare with the temples and the, and the Drexels and getting certain funds for specific programs that we have? What are our lobbyists? Do we have lobbyists? Um, do we have anyone lobbying for Lincoln University in Harrisburg to make sure that we get what we need? So, we, I know we have people, governor appointees on the board and things like, what are they actually doing? Are they just figureheads or do they really help to advocate for Lincoln University in Harrisburg? So I would like to see those, those kinds of things. And then I can also learn, um, you know, what, what are we trying to do that's been challenging for us as a university? What is the board trying to accomplish that may have been challenging? Um, and what, the, what is the president hope to do and how what has she been trying to do but has found found it challenging and then why have has have these things been challenges and what can we do to try to figure out to get past it to get what we need at Lincoln um, I think just being able to get more information um, so that I, we can figure out and then being on the board I, I'll throw out those questions and throw out those comments and throw out those possible solutions and maybe form an ad, ad hoc committee to say, well, we need to get on this or we need, you know, that kind of thing. So I would like to, um, that's what I would like to learn. <laughs> All right. No, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge sometimes to, to really look inwardly and say, okay, these are the things that I, I know, but there's, these are things that I don't know and like to build on. So appreciate you sharing that. Uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, the next question, and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Andrew Sproul. I mean, are there any questions from the audience that you'd like to bring forward, um, Drew, as, uh, as we close out and give Lisa an opportunity to, to give her closing statements after that? Actually, we have no questions uh, from in the chat. So why don't we do, since we do have a little bit of time. Go ahead. Why don't we ask anybody if they have any questions for anything that hasn't been addressed, if they can drop that into the chat really quick. Let's give everybody, everybody about a minute. And then after the minute, if we have nothing, then we can move forward with uh, closing statements from Lisa. I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm a candidate, but how many um, alumni trustee positions are becoming available this year? One. Oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna remute myself too. I just noticed I wasn't mute. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll give every, everyone about a minute, you know, just to think about, you know, some of the answers. I mean, if, if there's any uh, further follow-up that you'd like to hear, um, again, this, this presentation, for those of you who have joined late, is being recorded, and we'll have, you'll have the ability to um, to listen to, you know, our, our candidate, Lisa uh, Bacon, or Lisa M.B. Johnson, um, you know, and the questions and answers. But, um, you know, we want to give folks an opportunity, if there's anything that we have not touched uh, that you'd like to learn more about, uh, please feel free to put that into the chat. You have anything, Drew? No, we're all clear. Yeah, so I'm that gonna, means I'm going to take from that that Lisa's done an excellent job stating her position, and that means we did our job and asked some of the right questions. I mean, I, I know, you know, when you look at the work that goes into um, uh, getting 
a candidate to agree to, to run for this position. I mean, it's not easy work uh, to try to find and vet qualified candidates. And we think we've done an excellent job at presenting a, an excellent candidate for, for the body and also for the board you know, to, to, to select um, as the next alumni elected trustee. Um, one thing that I'd like to note is that if, if there are going to be two positions open next year, uh, two four-year positions that will be open next year, but this year's election is for one position. You know, so we have a cycle where we select one trustee one year and two the following year. Um, you know, to uh, to fill and complete those terms that are expiring. Um, if you want to run um, or want to consider running for the board, we want to get you in our pool of candidates. You know, so you know when we make an announcement that we have an election coming up and we like to have participants, we would love to have a deeper pool of candidates that we can select from and, and vet. And, um, you know, again, we know that we have a lot of talent uh, in our alumni uh, at Lincoln University. And I, but I think that, you know, one of the things that we, we really need is for that talent, you know, to step up and participate and be a part of the process. When that does happen, good things happen for not only the alumni association and alumni, but for the university. You know, good things happen for the university. And, uh, you know, you see that evident in, in the, uh, the current administration, um, you know, of our president, vice president and treasurer and, and that executive committee. Good things are happening. Money is being raised. Um, but we need more qualified candidates to step up and become uh, candidates for the, uh, for, the, for the board of trustees. And, um, you know, as we, as we go through uh, this process, uh, I want to give Lisa uh, a minute or, or two well, to... Hang on a second. I have two questions, actually. Hang right on, now. yeah. There's okay. a couple of questions. Okay, right. so let me, uh, let me give you two. So let's go with the first one. So for Lisa, uh, what areas of the Board of Trustees need improvement? And how would you work on these improvements? Well, I can just honestly say I don't know. <laughs> um, not being on the inside, I really don't know what needs to be improved within the board. Um, I think the university as a whole is doing a great job. So I can, with the renovations on campus, with that whole dealing with the COVID situation and all the emergency situations um, for to try to get us through the past two years, I'm sure the board and the president work together to make those things happen. Um, I can't speak to what areas of the board need improvement. Okay. I apologize. I just don't have that answer. <laughs> no worries. Next question. How do you find the right balance between holding university officials accountable for excellence and overstepping as a board member? This is a national issue right now for all universities. You said right, the, the right balance of what? How do you find the right balance between holding university officials accountable for excellence and overstepping as a board member? Well, the balance is clear in the roles. I think the board, um, the board is the, the, is the um, hiring manager for the university president. And I believe that the board has to allow that person to do what they were hired to do. Um, I think the board has other responsibilities if they feel that um, the, I guess the balance would come when you have the human resources committee on the board to deal with anything that comes up with the president. Um, the balance is basically you do your job as a board member and then you allow the president to do their job, the job that you hired them to do. I mean, that's the only way I can answer that question. And I know it's been difficult. We had our own trying issues um, a couple years ago um, with some things that were happening. But I really believe that if you hire someone, you went through a, a long process, that process is not one that's done overnight. You vet the person, you check their qualifications, you, it's a long process to hire a president. So when you go through that and you finally make a decision, I think it's, you know, it's only fair to that person to allow them to do 
what you hired them to do with and then as the board you oversee and you make sure that that person has whatever they need to get their job done okay. that's it for me yeah thank you i think we have one more and then that will be it uh, so once you gain the knowledge of the relationship between uh, the state of Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth, and Lincoln University, how would you use that knowledge uh, to help develop your personal and professional aspirations? Well, I don't really have any political aspirations. <laughs> so once well, I get that- Personal and professional. Personal and professional, I, I understand. Yes. Um, okay. But that that knowledge, the, that knowledge can only help me um, better understand what I would be allowed to do as a board member to help move the university forward. Um, I'm not particularly in this for any personal and professional development kinds of things. Of course, you learn things, you get the experience from serving and whatever happens while you're on the board, of course, you gain those, that knowledge and experience. But I'm not really in this to, to gain anything personal or anything professional because I'm a blessed woman and I just want to help. I just want to serve Lincoln University. And I think that as a member of the board of trustees, um, as a member of the board of trustees, I can serve Lincoln on a different level and just learn a little bit more about what's happening and how we can best, how Lincoln can best be served in the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Yeah, we we have one question from the, um, you know, from our AALU president, and um, you know, I thought it was very uh, uh, appropriate for for this this afternoon's uh, forum, uh, and it starts with you mentioned working with Lincoln on initiatives such as development. Uh, how will you do that, and also help to move the university forward? given the declining number of staff at the university um, and such, uh, such as in admissions and in development, you know, how would you use uh, the, 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 what you've learned in the past to help to bolster those areas within the university? Well, I'm not sure why there's such a, I think I saw some term with people were leaving. A lot of people are leaving. Um, I don't know. I think that's a conversation for the um, Human Resources Committee on the board and to find out why the heck are so many people leaving. I did the great resignation. Thank you. Even Dr. Allen mentioned that um, about the great resignation. And I don't understand why. I mean, I can't understand why. So until we can try to figure out why people are leaving like that, is it because they're, the pay is not there? Is it because they're, you know, they're getting opportunities elsewhere that are, that are giving them the tenure they're looking for or the whatever benefits professors get when they come to the university? Um, I just think even in the admissions, is it salary? Are other universities, you know, paying more for these people to come? We might need to look at the salary ranges of people. Be, and and um, I don't know if it's because of COVID Right now, a lot of people are preferring jobs to that where they can work from home. And if, you know, um, it's one of those things like moving from the 19th to the 20th century, from the 20th to the 21st century, you just kind of have to figure out, try to figure out what's happening and then create some, get creative on how you do things. Because with, I mean, I'm, I'm, that bothered me when I saw that. I didn't know how many positions were open, how many people were leaving. But it did bother me just as an alum um, and as someone, and I mentioned in my opening statement, some of the great professors that we had and some of the great times we had. We don't know, I mean, we have to understand why. We have to find out why. I don't know if there are exit interviews happening um, when the faculty leave or when, when, when the staff leave to find out why they're leaving. Is it because we're not paying them? I don't know. I don't know the pay structure for Lincoln University. But it could be that it could be because people just decided, oh, shoot, I want to just work from home. I'm going to there's so many jobs out there now where people can apply and work from home. Is it that we don't know? So I think that an assessment will have to be done. 
Um, so I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that, but it does, it is disturbing, especially even on the admissions level talking about that's the, that's the group that recruits and brings in the best quality of students that, you know, what, what we don't, I don't know. I really okay. don't know the answer to that, but it is disturbing. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Drew? No, that's it. Okay. Hey, uh, Lisa, I want to give you an opportunity just to, um, uh, to give a, a closing statement and um, you know, let us know why the, um, the body you know, should support your candidacy. And um, you know, so I'll give you, a, you know, a minute or two to, uh, to just give us a closing statement. Okay, well, I just want to first, I just want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, thank the committee uh, for um, approving my, or the, the AALU leadership for just approving my nomination for this. Um, I would just like to say that I have many, many years in public service in general. Um, I have served Lincoln University specifically as an active alumna. And when I was on staff for 10 years, um, I just want to serve as an alumni trustee so I can hopefully make substantive trailblazing contributions um, to future successes of our alma mater. Um, I wanna provide our alumni with continued representation within the policy and decision-making arm of our great institution. Um, and I wanna create ways that we can move Lincoln further in the forefront as a leader amongst HBCUs in particular and colleges and universities in general. And I think that when you're sitting, when you get a seat at the table, once you get a seat at the table and you can hear what's happening and you can see what's happening out there, it gives you a little bit more ammunition or it gives you a little bit more feeling for, that's why you can't really, until you sit at the table, you don't know what needs to be done. You don't know um, how, you can, how you can help um, until you're there and you hear things and you see things and, you, and you're walking that campus and you're walking around and you're talking to students and you're talking to the staff. Um, which may not happen that often, but if you are around, when alumni go to homecoming, you hear stuff. When you go to different basketball events and different, when you're on campus, you hear things. And then, um, you know, you just, when you're involved and you're at that table, you hear things and that, that'll that help you to better be able to serve. I just basically want to serve Lincoln. Um, and this is an opportunity for me to do that one more time. Um, just vote for Lisa. M.B. Johnson, vote for Lisa Bacon, class of 1985, um, again, and I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. And again, thank you, Lisa. Um, you know, before we close out, um, I wanted to, you know, just let everyone know that the election is on May 14th, uh, and it's for the Board of Trustees term 2022 to 2026. That's a four-year term. Uh, before I go through the election timeline, I did want to give our National Alumni Association President, Sharice Carney Nunez, an opportunity to speak to the body uh, regarding the election and the process. So, Sharice. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, uh-oh. You're there. I I am. I'm there. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, what an excellent way to spend my afternoon. Uh, first, I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to speak to Dr. Elaine Allen. Um, Dr. Allen, I am um, so grateful for you to have considered uh, running. This has been a challenging uh, couple of years for so many of us. Um, I just wanted to uh, 
to, to acknowledge that I see that. Um, that and so I'm, I'm putting into the chat something that I shared with um, Dr. Allen, please excuse the curse word. And <laughs> but I, I really thought it was important to share because, um, you know, we are trying to step up uh, because Lincoln needs us to step up, but we all have to know when it's the right time personally to do so. Um, and uh, it's a lot. And um, we want you to uh, step up again when it is that right time. And, um, and, and this is the time to take care of yourself. Uh, thank you for considering it but, uh, and, and for continuing to stay involved because we need you and people like you in the Alumni Association um, to be the stakeholders that Lincoln needs to thrive. I would like to say to you, uh, Lisa, M. B. Johnson. Well, you were there when 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 I was a student. You were at Lincoln. Uh, it was wonderful to see, uh, actually, both of you as candidates. Um, my immediate reaction was, "Can we have them both?" <laughs> when I saw the slate, um, so I'm very happy that you are so excited uh, about this opportunity for uh, to be nominated. Um, and so I want to say to the body, we still have an election, even though we have one candidate. I, I ran unopposed and um, I, I took my election period as if I were running, you know, with uh, three, three different challengers with me. And I, and I definitely saw that energy from uh, Lisa Bacon today. I saw that you continued to um, express yourself, your vision, your ideals, um, and your authenticity. Uh, where you said you didn't know, you actually uh, you actually said a lot in your answers when you talked about what you didn't know. And I appreciated that. Um, it is exactly the kind of uh, focus and energy that we need to bring to be able to support uh, Lincoln in this role as the um, alumni elected trustee. Um, and finally, I would like to say to the committee, as I actually had the opportunity to speak to the board this morning, and um, the spirit of collaboration is palpable. I'm very excited about that. The new chair, um, uh, Gerald Bruce has uh, put a spot, included a spot on a permanent spot for the Alumni Association president uh, to give an update to the board. So we have a great spirit of collaboration going on um, to support the, the, the vision. And, and what I said this morning was that I was so proud of the work that the nominations and elections committee has done. Uh, I'm not really a part of the, the process. I you know, chime in and give my opinions of once in a blue moon where they, they will let me. But this is really all Vernon and the uh, members of the committee that he introduced to you. And I just want to say thank you that the process worked, even though today wasn't how we all had um, planned when we signed on to the Zoom, it still shows that the process worked, the credentialing process that uh, that they adhere to brought us two quality candidates, two quality candidates. And so this is where we are. Um, but it doesn't mean we, we still need the, uh, the energy, the, the memberships that will come from people signing up to be able to vote. So please uh, get your, your, your classmates, your uh, sorority fraternity uh, members, uh, every, get everyone to pay their dues and to vote for you, Lisa, we still need that because it's the lifeblood of this association. It's the lifeblood that will allow us to be that strong partner uh, that Lincoln needs uh, in this particular role, which is the legal way in which we are connected to Lincoln through the alumni elected trustee process. And so I would like to thank you very much, Chairman Vernon Davis for your excellent work and I look forward to this election. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much, Madam President. I really, again, appreciate the uh, the kind words and also the uh, the comments for you know for our candidates and also future candidates. That again, we 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 would love to have them become a part of that process as well. 
there is an election timeline that we have to adhere to. Uh, you know, today's candidates forum is part of that election timeline, and we are going to have a Roar magazine dedicated specifically to the election so that, you know, you can learn a little bit more about Lisa before the, um, the, the election. Uh, there's also a dues payment deadline, and that's going to be March 18th. Um, March 18th um, is the dues deadline, so you have to pay your dues by March 18th. Uh, the Elections Committee, again, receives our voter lists from the National AELU on March 25th. Uh, the ballots are mailed on April 8th. Uh, the electronic balloting opens, and we encourage everyone, because of the inconsistencies of the Postal Service, uh, to vote electronically. You know, that process will work. Um, it, it has worked in the past, and it, it, it gives you an opportunity to select uh, your candidate very quickly, very efficiently, as opposed to having it go into the mail. But there is a mail-in ballot deadline uh, that we think will work in terms of getting the ballot to us in time, and that's April 22nd. So if you look at that as a guideline, um, we're going to pick up mail. The last day we're going to pick up mail is going to be on May 5th. Um, the election ballot closes on May 14th at noon. Uh, May 14th will be when the election day is. So uh, again, there'll be a, an opportunity for walk-in ballots and we'll give you the location uh, where we'll accept walk-in ballots um, on May 14th. But at noon, uh, we start counting ballots at 1230 on May 14th. And um, you know, the, um, you know, we're gonna make the announcement. Um, if we're having an alumni banquet live, we're going to do it at the banquet. Otherwise, we'll have a Zoom event at 6 p.m. to let you know what the, uh, uh, what the election tallies were. Um, and that, that's our way of, of being very transparent in terms of you understanding uh, how your vote mattered. And uh, we're going to send or we're committing to send a letter to the AALU president and executive secretary announcing the nominee. And, you know, just to be clear, we select a nominee that that name is submitted to the board and the board votes on our nominee to serve as our alumni elected member of the board of trustees. So that is the process. Again, we'll, we'll publish this and, you know, so you'll be able to have that, um, you know, so you can reference it and it will also be in the Roar magazine as well. Uh, again, dues payment, very important by March 18th and the election is May 14th. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to us at A-E-L-U-P-A, NOM, N-O-L-E-C, N-O-M-A-N-D-E-L-E-C at gmail.com. And, um, you know, that will conclude our 2000. Adam, yes. Lisa had her hand up. I don't know if it still is. I took it down, but I did, I did want to ask a question. Are we going to put an announcement on um, social media about the dues? And because I sent out, I didn't. When I sent out my flyer about the um, in all different avenues on the link, different Lincoln alumni web web pages on Facebook, I got mm -hmm. a lot of people who didn't know about the paying dues and stuff. And I didn't put that on my in my post. I just posted the flyer. I didn't tell them anything about that they had to pay dues first and all of that. So are we putting anything out there? I wouldn't want to put it out there. Um, on my own, if you guys put something out there, I will copy and paste it, and then I can include it when I put out my um, my flyer again to remind people about the dues and the deadline to pay dues so they can vote and yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, we're, we'll have that posted on on our website, on on our Facebook social media sites. Um, I think there's also a uh, Instagram site as well. Uh, we're going to have that posted there. It'll also be sent out to um, you know to our distribution list that we have. Um, you know, one of the things that if you're a life member, uh, you're, you're automatically going to get a ballot. Um, if you are already a paid annual member, you will get a ballot. Uh, we encourage you all to go into Wild Apricot and select um, that you'd like your ballot electronically. However, if you, if you do not, we will send it by mail. Um, you know, and, you know, we'll also, you know, it will be announced and posted um, in, in the same areas where you, where you get normally get information from our uh, National Alumni Association. Uh, we'll also share that with each one of the chapters as well. So they will have that information for their members uh, as well. So, um, you know, they, that they can post. So uh, yeah, we, we will 
definitely have all of that information in terms of deadlines and this whole election timeline that will be uh, publicized. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, one participating and, and listening in today. Again, the, this will be recorded um, and it will be posted so that you can listen to the answers again. Um, we'll get Lisa's contact information also posted. So if there are any questions that you have, you can actually send it to the nominations and election committee and we'll get it you know, to our candidate you know, to, uh, so she can address those and, and answer back to you. Uh, thank you everyone and hail, hail Lincoln. Hail, hail Lincoln. Thank you. Hail, hail Thank Lincoln. You so Great job. Thank you. Hail, hail Lincoln. We should sing the alma mater. <laughs> uh, like that. Lincoln. That wasn't on the, but that wasn't on the agenda. <laughs> Forward that one. Well, Vernon's always ready to sing. I don't know about that. My voice is a little well, shut. We should, look, we should have been prepared with the video. That's all. That we right. At least had a video. That's what we play. Because yeah. <laughs> I can't hold the tune, I tell you. All right. Have a blessed day. Grace and peace. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.